Hi, and welcome to my channel. One of the dumbest ways to get killed in an airplane is to place an unapproved external control lock on the airplane one day, and the next day, forget about it because you're distracted, and oh, by the way, not do a proper pre-flight inspection before you try and take off. If you read further into this report, you'll find that the pilot was distracted while moving the aircraft on the ground. This is what precedes most airplane accidents, a chain of events. However, a more sinister type of accident is happening far too frequently. VMC demonstrations leading to stalls and then spins from which pilots cannot recover. What does VMC mean? V stands for velocity, and MC stands for minimum control. It's just the speed at which, with one engine at idle and the other engine developing full power, the airplane can no longer maintain directional control with rudder. The problem is too many pilots are stalling and then entering spins from which they are unable to recover. This has resulted in the death of flight students, chief pilots, and even FAA examiners. The aircraft landed on a house. Incredibly, the observer in the back survived the crash. Let me explain VMC. VMC is the red tick mark next to the 80 on this indicator. The bottom of the white line, 72 knots, is the stall speed of the airplane with flaps full down. But you should remember, that's only in coordinated flight with both engines running and flaps down. Stall speed flaps up is higher. The stall speed is higher still with one engine at idle, uncoordinated flight, and adverse yaw. This trifecta of factors together is getting pilots killed. A far better alternative would be allowing instructors to simulate VMC at higher speeds by just limiting rudder travel. There were four accidents that occurred in a span of just 18 months while they were practicing VMC training in these light twins. A chief pilot was killed, a flight school owner was killed, and even a designated pilot examiner was killed, someone with more flight time than I have. If pilots like that can't recover from spins after unintentionally entering them while practicing VMC maneuvers that are required, maybe the FAA should reassess the way in which VMC demonstrations are supposed to be shown. The problem is twofold. Number one, how the standards are published. The VMC demonstration requires demonstrating a loss of directional control at air speeds below VMC before recovery. That does not leave much of a margin to work with. Until the practical test standards are rewritten, allowing the demonstration to be at speeds above VMC in a simulated fashion, these accidents will continue to happen. The second problem is that you are three times more likely to die if you are in a twin engine plane experiencing an engine problem. This is because the pilots are distracted and not maintaining aircraft control all the way to the ground. I did mention earlier how the frequency of VMC demonstration accidents could be reduced if the FAA allowed simulated version of EMC demonstrations to be done so that instead of having to get the aircraft so close to a stall and also uncoordinated, you could simulate it by just having an instructor limit rudder movement. And if you did that, air speeds would be higher, but the airplane would still lose directional control simulating a VMC demonstration. If you don't know already, typically maneuvers are practiced 3,000 feet above the ground, but VMC demonstrations are typically practiced 5,000 feet above the ground, and that isn't even sufficient because of the accidents that continue to occur. Too many multi-engine pilots are also doing a poor job of maintaining aircraft control when one engine fails 
as occurred here when this pilot was returning to an airport. He flew too close to it, he flew uncoordinated, and he also wasn't even qualified to be flying the plane. This second VMC demonstration accident involved a flight student and a very experienced flight instructor and examiner. The pilot under instruction and the flight instructor departed in the multi-engine airplane to conduct training. The airplane slowed and recorded engine data indicated that while the critical engine speed was reduced, the other engine speed was increased consistent with performing a VMC demonstration. During a VMC demonstration, power is reduced on the critical engine, the left engine, and the airplane is recovered before a loss of directional control or stall. The aircraft entered a flat spin from which it could not recover. Of note, the tail of a Baron is actually substantially smaller than say a Cessna 310. So the pilots, even with correct techniques, could not recover from the spin. One of the biggest clues investigators have for determining whether an aircraft was spinning before crashing is the clues it leaves on the ground. Almost no forward motion in any direction. Instead, the aircraft pancakes onto the ground. The report concludes that the flight instructor failed to maintain control of the airplane and inadequately supervised the flight, which resulted in a stall spin from which he could not recover. This next clip that I'm gonna share with you is another VMC demonstration gone wrong involving a flight instructor and his student. And the flight instructor contacts air traffic control for help. This is just the audio clip that you're going to be able to listen to. The following is the actual air traffic control communications between a pilot operating a beach travel air, which is an older version of a Beechcraft Baron, and air traffic control. The pilot was a flight instructor with a student, and they were going to be practicing VMC maneuvers, but then they got in trouble. I'm Bob, Bob, and Ben. I'm Bob, I'm going to spin. Made it, made it, made it. Man, I'm trying. I'm Bob, I'm going to try the opposite rider, try to get the wings level. The air traffic controller tried to help him. He told him to try the opposite rudder. And that's something not a lot of air traffic controllers would know. So he was probably a pilot, and he knew what needed to be done. You may be surprised to know that some multi-engine aircraft, especially older ones like this, don't perform very well when they lose one motor. This is what a VMC demonstration looks like from inside the cockpit of a light piston twin. This happens to be a Beechcraft Duchess. There is a reduction of airspeed of approximately one knot per second as the aircraft continues to slow down. Before the aircraft gets too slow, the instructor will first bring one engine to idle, in this case, the left engine, and then he will advance the other engine to full power. And the pilot flying can maintain directional control because he's still well above VMC. By the way, the beeping noise that you keep hearing in the background is a configuration warning that the gear is not down. When these maneuvers are done, the gear is never down. One of the other likely factors that led to the crashes of two of these aircraft during VMC demonstrations was that there were passengers observing from the back seat. And with passengers in the back seat, the center of gravity is much further aft, which makes recovery from a spin much tougher. Take a very close look at the heading indicator. When it starts turning, that's when it's time to reduce power to the operating engine and lower the nose. Safety regulations typically only occur after a lot of people die. Since that's not the case here, unfortunately, more of these accidents will occur. 
Safety is no accident, but this is one procedure that has definitely gone wrong and that needs to change sooner rather than later so we don't continue to lose not just flight students but experienced pilots. If you like this video, please let me know. Like and subscribe. And thanks so much for watching.